What is up guys, Johnny Two Fingers here, and this is the first video in my Far Cry 5 map editor tutorial series. This first video I'm going to be focusing on the basic object tools and how to move things around and copy and paste things and just give you guys some general tips and tricks to help you build your map and to help you build something really cool and something very fun and detailed. In each one of my tutorials I am going to be time stamping everything, breaking the video up into different segments uh, based on the things that I'm talking about. So if you go down to the description, you can just click down there and jump to whatever part of this tutorial that you like. So the first thing we're going to do when we get into this is figure out how to move around. Um, moving around inside the map editor is just like walking around in any first person shooter. Use your WASD keys, um, but to look around you want to hold your right mouse button down and that allows you to rotate your camera around so you can kind of navigate around your space here. Um, to put in an object, first thing we want to do is just click on this objects button here, but you, you'll see, you'll notice when you hover over the button, how there's just this objects and then a number five next to it, the little tag that pops up. Um, if you really want to know all of these hotkeys, you just go over to tools and you can just see them all in a list here. Um, yeah, each one you hover over, it'll just give you that little hotkey next to it. I've been having issues with this editor and the, and the user interface, so I just go to the tools thing to really see my hotkeys. Um, it's really straightforward. All right, since we're focusing on objects, I'm just going to go ahead and either click this objects button or hit the five key. And that is going to activate our objects section here. And off to the uh, right side here, um, you can see this panel where you see all our objects. Um, what we want to do is, first of all, the first thing I do is I place a spawn point in. Uh, the reason for that is not necessarily to spawn into the map, but so that I have some point of reference. Um, I can see how tall a human being is in this map, which will give me a good reference for the scale of uh, the map that I'm going to make. It's really easy to just lose track of how big or how small your map is. It's really, it's very easy to get into a zone. If you don't put those spawn points in there, you could end up building something that is just not the right scale. This is issues that I've had going way back to building maps in Duke Nukem 3D in like the 90s. Uh, that problem just persists throughout, but it's, you know, the solution's always been the same. You just pop your little start point in there and you get an idea of how, how big your guy's gonna be. So we're going to go off to this panel over here. Um, the first thing I want to do is just, I'm just going to find just a random shape here. Um, my favorite sh things in this map editor so far have been the generic shapes. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, go down into my little menu down here, and just grab a block and plop it in here. And you do ex exactly what you'd think you do, and you just left click to drop the block in there. Um, you can just pull it right out of this little panel here, and if you scroll down, um, you can see a bunch of different objects here. Um, there's all different, all types of different categories, and if you want to expand the category, you just click on this little arrow, and you go down the list, you know, within each category there's a bunch of different things to pick from. And, and you can scroll up and down here, there's, there's quite a lot of things to, to pick from here. There's a lot of you that didn't know all this, I'm just really, I'm going over the basics. Um, there's a lot of people that don't know about using the Far Cry map editor or they're coming over from the consoles into PC. Um, this is really, um, right now I'm just getting into the, uh, the real basics, the sort of meat and potatoes. All right, so we've got our cube here. Um, we may not necessarily want this cube in this position. Um, so what we want to do, we're going to, we're going to really want to move this thing somewhere, right? You want to go up here to the move objects tool, or if you hover over it here, well, you should see a two pop up. So you just tap the two key here and there's all kinds of bits and bobs over here in the menu here. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. But for right now, I just want to move my objects, so I'm just going to grab this little widget here, this horizontal uh, widget that will slide it around on the ground here, on this horizontal plane. Now, we are working with a three-dimensional object, so there are three dimensions to this widget. Um, but for right now, we're just going to start with this flat one and just move it horizontally. And this will place it, you know, along the ground here on a horizontal plane. And the same thing works for each side of these panels. If you're, as long as you're grabbing the corner, um, you're going to be moving it in uh, two directions, essentially. Um, the same thing applies all the way around. All three-dimensional software 
that has these widgets and they all operate pretty much the same way. Um, that's just a general rule of thumb. I don't remember which one's X, Y, or Z. That's something that I'll have to get used to again. And also, if you're doing a lot of finer movements and you want to like work in a smaller space, if you go down to the speed down here, you see this little guy running down here, you can just click on that and you can change the speed of your camera movement. Um, and I typically want to slow things right down when I'm working in a smaller space. And this just allows me to kind of move without kind of taking off on my objects too quickly. Uh, you can adjust that anytime. If you're building a bigger map, you can go down and just pick the faster speeds. Um, or if you want to move over a bigger space a lot faster, you can do that. Uh, so each one of these widgets is pretty much functions the same way. You know, you just grab, grab each side and you can move it around. Um, now, as you can see, I just uh, got rid of my object preferences here. I did not mean to do that. Um, so if you end up, here's a, here's a quick tip. If you end up totally messing up your your screen layout and now you don't have any of your windows up and you have no tools here um, don't panic your tools are not gone forever all you have to do is go up to view and click reset layout and what that's gonna do is reset your your layout and give you all of your windows back and all your tools and all that good stuff that helps you build a map all right so we're gonna go down to our object preferences here and as you see, we have this default texture selected on this. Um, so what I'm just going to go down and just pick a random texture. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to grab one. Uh, I have nothing particular in mind. Um, I really do... You can see the detail in this texture. I really do like the textures uh, quite a bit. I mean, they're not perfect. They're, they're, they're pretty two-dimensional, but in a, you know, once you, once you really build out your map and you have the lighting and everything set up, it's, it can be pretty damn convincing. Um, so I have myself a block here. Maybe I want to rotate my block. So you go up to the rotate tool or the three key, and then you see this rotational widget that looks like an atom pop up here. This thing can be a bit confusing because it's really difficult to tell which angle you're looking at it. Or you can just experiment with it and, you know, just grab different pieces of it. And So say I want to rotate it and I want to just tilt it up on its end. Say I want to rotate it according to the actual world space. I click on the world button. It'll reorient the widget so it'll allow me to, to rotate it according to the world space. And then I can just tip this cube right up on its end like this if I feel like doing that. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's balancing right on the uh, corner here. And if you decide I just really don't like what I just did there, you can just click reset tilt and it'll flatten it right out. Uh, when you're building custom stuff here, you see how this is a little offset. Sometimes you just want to rotate it back to a nice 90 degree angle. Um, you can use the guides on the ground and just really get in there and rotate with this widget. And it's pretty accurate to, uh, to the actual grid itself. It'll, it'll be pretty close to snapping on the grid. There's a, there's a very slight amount of snap to the rotation. Um, you can get it pretty much spot on. I typically try to keep everything to the original orientation if I'm doing a lot of custom builds. Um, and you can just undo and redo. Um, Control Z undoes, or you can just go up to these, these two buttons here and just uh, click on undo or redo. All right, so typically when you select something, you want to be using your select tool because if you use the other tools, you'll end up either rotating it or moving it around uh, unintentionally. Now, now that I've got this selected now, uh, I want to try to rotate this at a specific angle. Now I'll scroll back up here and now you can see that there's options to uh, snap to an angle. And this is very handy if you're doing architectural builds especially. So I have this set to 90 degrees, so if I want to rotate this thing 90 degrees, I just grab it by this horizontal widget here and uh, it'll rotate on this axis. Another thing that's really cool, you can actually set where you want to have the widget. So if you go over to your move tool, you can say pick pivot position and click on anywhere on this object here and it'll move that widget to that point. So you have to go back to your move tool in order to select your pivot position. Um, you don't have that option in the rotate tool for whatever reason, so once you have that set You'll be able to rotate it based on the new pivot point instead So if you copy the object and move it around the pivot point will reset itself that doesn't copy over 
this new pivot point is just going to apply to this object. Now, if you want to keep doing that and you're, when you're copying objects, you're just going to have to redo that. So I've got my object set in here, and if I want to rotate this at a 45 degree angle, I can go down here to the uh, various snap angles, click 45. That will, that will rotate everything based on a 45 degree angle. It is really handy. It really helps keep everything very, uh, very straightforward and very clean. Um, so that way you're not really just trying to eyeball everything. Um, it keeps everything very nice and neat looking. All right, so now I want to make more of these blocks. So there's the standard copy paste where you just click on it and then uh, once you've highlighted it, you just hit Control C. And if you really just want to, you know, double check your shortcuts, go over to Edit and you can see Control C and Control V for paste. It's pretty standard copy paste shortcuts. So I can just Control V and paste it, and then I'll have this other block here. And I can try to line it up, and I can get relatively close. But what's going to save me a lot of time, especially when I want to make a straight wall, is just holding the Shift key down and click on this widget here and just drag it straight across. And now I've got two blocks, and they're perfectly lined up. And that looks great. Uh, but one thing you'll notice, especially if you haven't really been building maps for very long, um, when you're lining two blocks up like this, when you're moving around your objects, I'm just going to jump in real quick here and get a look at this. So you have this flashing, strobing texture happening here. This is a rookie move. Everybody that's been building since the old school Far Cry days in the you know, mid-2000s from like the Far Cry 2 days. Um, we've all done this. So this flashy thing here, you know, it'll happen and you're not really sure what's causing it and you'll click on it or move it or something and it just stops. Um, there's a reason that's happening here. So what we have is two polygons that are trying to render at the same time. Um, that is what is known as Z fighting. So the way to correct this, so we don't have these overlapping polygons, is you can either line it up by moving it. So switch over to the move tool here and you can just tap the arrow keys um, or move it by the widget. Um, really just depends on how you want to move it. Um, but sometimes you'll just still end up with a little gap and you just don't like the way that looks and you want to have them kind of connected together a little better. So I'll scoot it over and I'm still going to have a little little line of that what, what's known as flashies. So what you want to do is you want to offset it just a tiniest little bit. So having offset that off to the side a little bit and then raise it up or lower it a little bit, um, what that's going to do is it's going to stop the uh, it's, it's going to stop the polygons fighting like they were, and you're not going to have that flashy. So if I so if we decide we want to go ahead and scoot this block back into it a little bit, so there you know it overlaps a little bit. So now we're not going to have these polygons fighting for dominance. You know, the worst thing that happens is you have this little line here. Um, and it's easy to overlook that, um, especially if you're running and gunning and there's a lot of action going on on the map. I mean, that, that little crack is, you know, if you're, if you're obsessed with it, of course, you don't want to have that in there. But for the most part, that's, you know, it's better to have that little line than it is to have the flashing polygons. So once you've adjusted your block and everything is, you know, exactly how you want to have it, now I want to select both of these objects. So I want to make this twice as high. In order to do that, you can just get this uh, selection tool and just kind of lasso both of these things here. And look, I've got two things selected. Great. Things tend to get a little more complicated after a while. Once you have a bunch of objects around this, it gets very difficult to just use that lasso tool without selecting a bunch of other stuff. So there is a multi-selection option here. So you click one object and you hold shift and click on the second object and now we have both of them selected and the more you expand things you're just eventually going to end up with uh, you know objects in front of other objects now, I'm not really sure what's going on with the green here um, it just seems like everything is just lined up perfectly here and it's giving me this green barrier here I'm not sure what that's about um, so I'm just going to pretend that's not happening and keep with going on with the build here so now I just want to select just portions of an area here. 
and say I've got a ton of blocks here in this space. And I want to try to grab something with my lasso selection. And I just try to get just the blocks that I want to get here. And, okay. I don't want to grab these two, I just want to grab these other four here. So, there's a better way to do it, of course. I can just grab these and, you know, lasso it a little better. Um, but things tend to get a little complicated, so... Let's just assume we don't want to grab these ones over here. We want to leave these guys still. We just want to lasso all these blocks and leave these four blocks alone without moving those or selecting them or anything like that. So we'll select the ones we don't want to move and we're going to go over to our selection tool and we want to scroll down and click the freeze selection button. And now what that does, it'll freeze the selection meaning that those four pieces aren't going anywhere now. You can't select them, you can't move them, they are frozen in place. So now when you want to select everything with the lasso tool, you are not, you're not able to grab them at all. And that's the whole point of freezing them. So now if I want to just select just those objects without selecting the, uh, those four undesirables, those four cubes are not going to be affected by our selection tool. And you can just move things around and not have to worry about bothering those other guys. So if you want to move these objects again, you go back into your selection tool. And you go down to unfreeze all objects and now you can move these objects again. This is really handy when you're doing a lot of custom building because when things get really complicated and you'll have objects in front of other objects and you just want to grab a large group of objects and move stuff around without moving something that you're not trying to move, um, that's very handy. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm going to show you something that I ran into. Um, so I'm just going to make a stack of blocks here. I'm just going to click on the block, hold shift, drag it up, so an issue that I have been running into while selecting multiple objects, in most applications, when you want to select multiple things, you're holding the shift key down and clicking on each consecutive object until everything is selected. And in the Far Cry 5 map editor, this does work. Um, and I have been using this for a while and it, it, it works just fine. But what will end up happening is you're going to end up copying and duplicating objects because holding shift and moving an object will actually duplicate the item. So what you end up with is a bunch of duplicated items just kind of hidden inside of one another. And this can just be a, just be a real mess because then you have a bunch of these hidden extra objects just kind of eating up your budget and and these objects just don't need to be there. So you might be thinking, okay, well, aesthetically, this is fine. It's not really bothering me. I can't tell that those objects are in there. But over time, this accumulation of uh, extra objects just kind of hiding throughout the map, you're just going to end up eating up so much of your budget, especially if you're doing a larger build and you want to get a lot of detail into it. It's just really good to keep track of all this stuff and to kind of keep everything very neat and not have duplicated items that are just you know, just eating up your budget. So the way around this, which I recently had to figure out, um, is instead of holding shift when you're clicking on each consecutive item, you hold the control key. And it serves the same function, but when you're holding control, you're not gonna end up duplicating anything. Um, this is gonna save you a lot of hassle. Also, before I forget, uh, while you're holding the control key down, and you're selecting multiple objects and you're clicking on each one, just be mindful that you're not moving your mouse around too much. Um, what's going to happen is if you're holding control and you click on your object and drag it to one side or the other, um, it will rotate the object. Um, that can be handy if that's what you're trying to go for, but um, it'll really mess you up if you're just trying to select stuff. So between holding shift and holding control when you're selecting these objects, um, you really kind of have to pick your battles here. Uh, that really just depends on uh, the situation. Really. Um, so just being aware of this, it's going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of time. All those minutes and all those seconds you spend correcting these, you know, and deleting these duplicate objects and checking everything, it all adds up. And it only takes 60 minutes to make an hour. And it's really easy to just burn through, you know, an hour of just adjusting and tweaking things if you just keep, you know, if you just get into a bad habit of duplicating these things accidentally. So just be mindful of that. 
So there's been a lot of people asking in the uh, the Discord chats and there's been a lot of people asking about um, using snapping for objects to snap objects together so that they're nice and flush together. Now, the easiest way that I've found how to do this, if I want to make one continuous wall here and I don't want to continually tweak this, um, I want to click align to object and then I'll just drag it over and line it right up. And what this does is it'll, it'll, it'll literally just make it so the objects will overlap each other, kind of how we were having with the duplicates. So, when, so now when I just like click, when I just drag over this over here, it'll overlay it right over top of the other one. So now if I want to snap this together, I, I click on uh, use snap grid and you can change your grid size to, you know, to where you want to snap it to. But what we want to do is snap it to the object size itself. So you click on snap object size, make sure this box is checked here. And now when I scoot it over, it's going to be snapping to the size of the actual object. So now I can just keep hold shift drag it over and then I've just snapped I've snapped it you know according to the size of the object that's the closest way that I have found to get snapping to work so as far as rotating on snap points that's uh, that's a different tool altogether um, I will be getting into that later on every once in a while what you'll end up with here is that you'll have this gap um, you just if this happens you just have to go back over to align to object um, repeat the process um, and then just drag it back out and you know, you'll be able to close those gaps pretty easily and you just keep going with it you'll have issues with the snapping here and there but for the most part it's uh, it's pretty straightforward and pretty clean and you see I ended up with this uh, this issue where it's not snapping properly again you just go back over to the uh, Align the object button and click it, bring it back, and then as long as snap grid and object size are checked, drag it out to where you want it to be. Now you can see everything is lined up exactly perfect, seamless. So now if I want to just make like a longer curve shape, I can just select these objects, hold shift, drag it over. And if you're trying to get creative with it, then you can just uh, so here, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate this by 45 degrees. So what we want to do is scroll up here. And I've already got my snap angle on. It's already set to 45 degrees, so I just rotate it here. And typically you're going to get this widget uh, on the last object that you selected. That's just standard. Alright, since I've got the snapping on now, it's actually just going to try to keep snapping. So what I want to do is go and turn the object snapping off. So turn off snap to grid, and then you can kind of move things freely again. This is a very tedious process. So if you want to get into map building, you really have to be prepared to just really focus for a long period of time and um, really get in there and just, it's, it's, it's really quite tedious, but you know, it's, it is a really, it is an art form and it's very enjoyable. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my selection tool here and grab these objects individually. Every once in a while, if you feel like you've been careless with your selecting, you just gotta kind of move something to make sure that you didn't duplicate it. All right, say I've selected all these and I just don't wanna select this guy. And a lot of people, what a lot of people will do is just hit escape or they'll click on the terrain um, to deselect everything. That's going to waste a lot of time and it's going to be frustrating. Um, so really what you want to do is if you accidentally select an object that you didn't mean to select, um, let's just say I don't want to have this guy selected. What I want to do, while I have my selection tool active, I'm going to hover over the undesired object, I'm going to hold the Alt key and I'm going to click on it. And look at that, it's not selected anymore. And now I can move this around without being burdened by our unwanted block here. That's going to save you a lot of time. But for now, I'm going to reselect this guy because I actually do want him. He's part of the team. 
Sometimes it can be a little tricky trying to grab stuff through the widgets, so lining your camera up uh, definitely helps you out. All right, so now I've got my angle here, and I've got this uh, Z fighting happening here again. So one of the best ways to fix that, instead of actually manually grabbing and moving something, what you can do is you can actually go into the position. Alright, see so now that I have this flashing here, um, remember how I said this was because of Z fighting and overlapping polygons? Um, really the, uh, the best way to take care of this, and it's probably one of the most simple ways to do it, is you just select the object that's flashing, just one of those objects. You just click on it and it'll give you the uh, position here. So what I want to do is just change it by a single digit or two. Um, just really simple, small increments. Sometimes that doesn't quite do it, so you want to go a little further with it. Yep, see? I just changed the orientation by just like a couple, couple little points there. And now there's no more flashing, no more Z fighting. And your maps will look professional um, because there's nothing that says noob like a bunch of flashies. Uh, sometimes when you adjust it by little increments like that, you might have a tiny little seam, but you really got to be paying attention to notice those things. And as I said, the uh, the seam is much less of an eyesore than having the flashing polygons. Um, so yeah, you can just, if you want to continue this curve, you can just keep doing this, keep uh, selecting it and duplicating it. Um, and since the 45 degree angle is already set, you know, it's just going to continue on this curve. Um, hit 2, switch back to the move tool after a while. It's just going to start uh, becoming second nature and you can get into a nice rhythm and, you know, really start knocking out some geometry pretty quickly. Um, you know, you'll eventually just end up just a lot faster than you started out. Um, I have no plans. I'm not really coming up with anything specific. It's just really just off the top of my head. Um, all right, so we're going to go back over to our Z axis over here, and we're just going to scoot it down by a point or two. Yep. And our flashies are gone again. Um, yeah, pretty much rinse and repeat until you get the desired shape that you're looking for. I'm really not building anything in particular right now. I'm just playing with this really... But, uh, but I guess we can pretend we're building something. So uh, maybe I'll do something with, with a little bit more of an intention here. Um, yeah, let's just start popping some pillars in here. So before I do that, I gotta go over and turn all my fancy snaps and grids and such. Um, yeah, hold shift, grab that widget, pull it down, and it'll duplicate it. And I've got a nice seamless, uh, seamless connection here, as long as I got that snap grid on there. And what I typically do once I've got a couple in there, I'll just grab a couple and duplicate them. It just saves a little bit of time. Um, it should be it. Nope, we got a little bit of a space down there. So I'll just grab. So what I'm gonna do is just grab everything with a big lasso. And uh, now if you get further away, you can see this widget and it looks like it's expanding and shrinking. But uh, technically it's not actually changing size at all. It's just an optical illusion here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get back here and uh, grab my widget, sink it down to the ground. And now it's just very nice indeed. Look at this, I got a nice uh, hook shape. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Yeah, so what I think I'm gonna do is just uh, maybe go around here and add some more pillars here. Let's just center it right up here. I'm just gonna keep doing the same process here. Um, you know, and this is just much easier to do it like this. Oh yeah, what I ended up here with is it's not snapping anymore because I have the selection tool active instead of the move tool. Um, so if you're doing the snapping, you want to make sure you have your move tool on here. There we go. That's nice and that's nice and snapped in position here. And you do the same thing, rinse and repeat. The reason I'm not copying the other pillar is because it's just much easier to line something up just by moving it like this. I don't really have anything specific in mind here. I'm just kind of winging it. And that should complete our pillar here. And sometimes it's easier just and just faster to just undo something than it is to try to tweak it. It's all about saving yourself some time, you know, any, anywhere where you can uh, save some of your time and, and learn the shortcuts and really just, you know, 
kind of figure out how to do it a little faster. You know, once you've learned all the shortcuts, um, you know, your build time is just going to, you know, it, it'll your build time will go down and your produ productivity will go up. Um, that's just inevitable. Once you learn the tools, you're just going to get used to it. Um, in my opinion, these generic objects are the best part of the Far Cry 5 map editor. There's a lot of really great features, but this opens up so much for custom building. I know if you haven't seen a lot of custom builds, you, you really it's hard to really appreciate what I'm saying here with these generic shapes, but there's a lot of guys from way back and then you know since like the first Far Cry. These guys know what they're doing. They're very creative and uh, they can build their asses off and they'd be more than happy to show you what you can do as far as uh, custom objects goes. Just just by looking at their work uh, you'll learn so much. Um, as a matter of fact I'm just gonna hop over to my other map here and uh, I'm gonna just show you how I do some custom building. So you can actually see the process. I'm not going to save it, it's nothing special, so I'm just going to click no. I'm going to open my, uh, this is this is my first, uh, my first attempt at a build. Um, I started experimenting and I just figured I, I liked how things were turning out, so I just went ahead and just started turning it into a full-on map. So this, this magnetic snapping tool thing here, um, it can be pretty confusing, it's a little tricky to figure out at first. Um, I really didn't mess with it too much in the Far Cry 4 map editor. Um, but I do have a, a better understanding of how it works now. So um, if we go up to, up to uh, use snap angles, for instance, um, you select your first object, and you can essentially just drag it over to uh, whatever polygon you want to snap it to, um, and set it to 90, 45, 20 degree angles. Um, it really just depends on how you have this set. So I'm just going to duplicate this object and, uh, and try to show you the, the best way to explain this here. So I go to my magnetic snap tool here, and then I click on this object here, and see I've, I've snapped it to the middle here. It's a little finicky, but see now you can point at the actual polygon that you want to connect it to, and it'll snap uh, to whatever face you're pointing at. So um, you're essentially just kind of gluing the faces together, and it'll snap to the angle that you have selected, um, which is really quite handy. So, so what you have to do for the snap tool is uh, you set your angle, and you have this uh, your use snap angles checked here. And a lot of people call this just the magnet tool or the snap tool. Um, so you can set the angles you want to snap to. It's a little tricky to get used to, but uh, once you get this down, you can do some really cool stuff with it. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of time tweaking and adjusting stuff. So I've just duplicated this object here. And I'm going to go over to my magnetic snap tool. Or hit the 4 key. So I have snap angles turned on. And I've got it set to 45 degrees. So this is the part that I want to snap to over here. So what I want to do is click on this polygon here and drag it here. And boom. You'll snap it to a nice 45 degree angle here. So you can make a nice rounded shape. Um, you can also change the direction. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise with it, and it'll uh, it'll adjust your angle here. Um, uh, so that's very handy. So I just duplicate this object again and uh, go back to my magnetic snap tool. And once you get used to the uh, you know the shortcuts, you're able to jump back and forth pretty quickly here. Um, so I just hit the four key and uh, grab this side here and drag it over snaps right together like that now it's, now it's like a little question mark shape yep. and you can just snap these points right together like that and it just keeps going and you can you can switch the angle um, you can switch the uh, direction of it and have it snap the other way um, even if you have something already snapped you can just go back through and re-snap it again so I want to snap this to this one over here at like a five degree angle. See how this is like a little subtle little angle there? It's just very tiny little curve to it. So if you want to do a nice big long curved object, it, uh, you know, you could use that, that uh, five degree angle here and yeah, that's, uh, this, this is pretty handy. And if you want to change the angle of your snap and you don't like the way it turned out, you can just uh, readjust it and re-snap it. It's very handy. 
I'm not sure what preserve orientation means. Um, I don't really, I don't really like messing with it, so I'm just gonna turn that off. It doesn't seem to work how I want it to. So, um, also, there's a, there's something here that I don't want to overlook. It's really handy if you just want to place a bunch of an object. Um, for example, I'm just gonna throw a bunch of trees down. Um, say we'll, we'll go we'll go into the trees, and I'll just pick a tree. Um, unfortunately for those of you on console, you don't have the search feature, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and search for a tree here. Um, I'm not trying to rub it in your face, it's just I have it, so I'm going to use it. Um, Alright, so I've got a tree here, and I'm going to place my tree down. Alright, now I want to put another tree. I have to go back in and click the tree again, and place it, you know, I have to place them one by one. So instead of having to do that, I want to go up and just click the add multiple objects. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to just, well, add the multiple objects. And I can just keep adding, well, the same damn tree over and over again. <laughs> so that's going to save you some time um, without having to keep going back into the menu and gra grab an object and pull it out. Um, yeah, so there's that. I am building a steel foundry, so this is kind of the uh, warehouse structure that I'm uh, that I'm building. And this is all just made out of generic shapes. Pretty much everything in here is, this whole building is generic shapes. With the exception of these uh, brick walls down here. Um, I wanted to have a little bit more interesting texture. Um, and with the generic shapes, the textures can kind of repeat a whole lot. So I sacrificed the low budget cost of the generic shape so I can have a nice, a nice uh, texture there. Um, I didn't really need to, it wasn't necessary, but since I figure you're going to spend a lot of time on this ground level, um, and you're going to be close to that wall from time to time, I just wanted it to be visually a little more appealing. So um, so yeah, everything in here is built out of uh, generic shapes. These rusty, these, these rusty beams, uh, the walls here, I mean you can just click on the wall and it'll show you, see it's like, uh, you can see down here, it's a uh, you know, the, the texture here and um, the, the name of the object, it's all listed when you click on it. You know, it's all just straight up, you know, and it'll show you what piece you're using. See, it's wall corner, 500 by 20 by 20. Um, you know, it's just textured geometry. And if you're using a lot of the techniques that I'm teaching you and all these little tips and tricks and you're just patient, you can build pretty much anything you can think of. Now I've seen plenty of people talking about how certain aspects of it are limited and they don't really like the textures and blah blah blah. You just have to get creative with it. And it, it takes some time. See I just went through here and framed all this out and, and uh, how, I, how I do a lot of this is I'll just go outside of my main structure here and I go over to what I call the, uh, the scrapyard over here. And these are uh, template builds, just like pieces that I put together. Um, this is where I built my I-beams and all my structure stuff just outside of the uh, the main area here So it's a lot easier to just select and copy stuff So you can just see uh, each object is you know little generic shapes here uh, You can see the texture here. It's all just a simple rusty metal texture Now this one's got a little bit of a gap in it. So um, this is kind of an old uh, kind of a defunct uh, custom object here, so I'm actually just going to get rid of this one. Um, I wasn't actually using this piece. But you can see this one's all uh, nice and tight together though. There's no seams or any cracks in this. Um, so this is the one that I was actually using for my main structure in here. Um, again, yeah, this is all just made out of different, different uh, simple generic shapes. Yeah, you just drag this out and you see it's just it's literally just a little block here. Simple geometry. And you can do some you can do some really cool stuff with it here. So I'm gonna jump up my speed to 10 here, and I'm gonna zip across the map because I have a bunch of objects I'm building over here off to the side. Um, if you hold Shift, you go a lot faster than, than your normal movement speed. So yeah, you'll be able to zip around pretty quick. So this is like kind of a hybrid uh, custom build. Well, it's a fully custom build, but it's, I use some pre-existing assets and uh, a lot of just basic geometry. Especially this uh, 
the smelting ladle here. You can see that this uh, metal pouring down is actually literally just a rectangle. Um, it doesn't really have much detail to it, but a lot of that is really just has a lot to do with the lighting. Um, and I'll just tweak the lighting a little bit and kind of give you an idea of, you know, the effect that the lighting can have on this here. How just changing the uh, the angle of the sun and, and changing the, the time of day can really just affect how your lighting comes across, um, as well as actually tweaking the, the intensity of the light itself. There we go. Now you see if you just if you tweak this uh, this time of day just a little bit, you'll get just just jumps in the intensity and the lighting, and you can just kind of tweak that back and forth. You know, go back go back and forth between like adjusting the actual lighting in the map and adjusting the actual uh, intensity of your lights themselves. I'm gonna get into more detail with that in another tutorial, but this is just kind of an example of the type of stuff you can get away with if you're just clever with what uh, what they're giving you to use in the uh, Far Cry 5 map editor. So you can see how the, how the light just has like a nice uh, bloom to it. And, um, there's going to be some more tweaks I got to do to it. Uh, this is definitely far from being finalized, but um, you, get the, you get an idea of how you can take basic geometry and really just play with it. Um, you really don't even notice at this point that it's a rectangle until you're like right up on it. Yeah, it just requires a lot of tweaking and a lot of just experimenting. And sometimes you just have to jump in and test it. You know, you won't really know what it looks like until you jump in. Oh yeah, look. I've got some Z fighting here, got some flashies. Um, you might not see that from different angles, but uh, that's why you have to jump in and kind of take a look around because uh, you'll see things that you missed in the editor. And anytime you see that stuff, you gotta jump right back into the editor and adjust it right away. Cause uh, the last thing you wanna do is uh, look like a total amateur. That is a rookie move. Yeah. To test it out, you just look at different angles and you'll see little flashy uh, strobing textures. You just you really just want to try to avoid that at all costs. It really just is very distracting and you know kind of pulls you out of the experience if you're seeing strobing textures around you. It's just lots of little stuff like that you have to pay attention to. Um, I'm actually just gonna I'm gonna adjust the lighting here real quick just to uh, set it up so it's got the right kind of glow to it. So I'm not really going to get too much into the environmental stuff right now. Um, the, only re the reason I came in here was just to show you, was just to show you the type of stuff that you can make. I mean, this this ladle is just made out of just various shapes. I um, mean, I mean, I have this uh, pipe kind of acting as my main uh, foundational shape here. I just got a lot of generic shapes, kind of framing it out, just a little rusty texture on them. I got pipes and caps and. You know, even this uh, chain here, I made out of uh, I made out of like elbow pieces of pipe. See, I scoot that to the side, and you're gonna see that's this little angled piece of pipe there. You can get pretty crazy with it. Um, some of these pieces are, you know, they're not the they're, they're not generic shapes. They're actual just the assets. Um, you know, you can just point at it and let's see. So if you just select it. Um, here, I'll go to my selection tool. You just select the objects here, and it's gonna—it'll tell you what you have selected. Um, believe it or not, that's just a, that's just one of those like newspaper boxes that you see on the side of the road. It's just a little yellow newspaper box, hit, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that you can just take these objects that exist and make something else out of it entirely. Um, you know, because that's while well, that may be a newspaper box now, that's part of the uh, crane hook here. That is a damn nice crane hook, if I do say so myself. Uh, there, that's about it as far as the object tools. Um, if you guys have any questions, any concerns, anything you can't quite figure out, uh, go ahead and just drop a comment. If you guys want to see a certain type of tutorial, just go ahead and let me know. I'm just going to keep continuing on the tutorial series. I'm going to move into uh, working out stuff with the terrain and the texturing and uh, you know, kind of helping you get an idea of how to build an environment that's believable. Um, kind of show you some tips and tricks there as far as uh, you know doing the terrain and stuff. Um, I'm just really going to pick this whole map editor apart and really just get into detail. So 
Um, and with each with each tutorial, I'm going to break it down, timestamp everything, so it should be pretty easy to navigate. Um, it's really just going to be based on general categories and broken down like that. So it should be uh, really straightforward, really easy to understand. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more tutorials from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And uh, I will see you on the next tutorial. Again, if you have any ideas or or any comments or anything, anything you want, you need to know about, just go ahead and let me know, and I will try my best to sort it out for you, or just do a tutorial and uh, add your concerns in there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.